And we have, we are very fortunate, before we hear from Paddy, who thinks he's next, but Paddy, we've got a very important here from the NUT, who's a brief visitor, I think. Um, so if you can, hang on. Sorry, General Secretary, did I give you... Uh, did I give you... <laughs> that's, that's absolutely fine. Um, I'm staying for the rest of the meeting, so I'm happy to go in any order that you want me to, and I'm uh, very sorry for being here later than the meeting started. I was in another meeting round the corner uh, this morning. So, I, I'm recently elected as the General Secretary of the National Union of Teachers, and I've come along to... Uh, <laughs> but I've come along to say that the NUT is really pleased that this resource has been published and that we want to encourage schools to use it. I, th th there is always the question about what we should teach and why we should teach it. And I was looking this morning at UNICEF's definition of what education should be about, what it should be for. And UNICEF, the UN says that we want the fullest development of every child's personality, their talents and their abilities. Sometimes people think that means getting them a job, and getting a job is part of that. But the UN also says it's about learning to live with one another, to live peacefully, to respect other cultures, respect other people, to, uh, fight for the environment. So education is about more than just getting a job. We see the way people with learning disabilities were treated in the past and still are all too much doesn't lead to their fullest, the fullest development of their personality at all. So reflecting on the fact that some people are excluded from our education system is something worth doing. But also the idea that we talk about learning to live together is also important. And my God, our society has made huge strides. I, um, this is a bit off, it's not off the point. I was reading something that Nelson Mandela wrote uh, after he'd been released from prison and he went to Cuba and he was sharing a platform with Fidel Castro and he said, how far we slaves have come. And there has been a huge degree of progress for, uh, for people, for black people. LGBT people have made huge strides. I think people with physical disabilities have made huge strides. But perhaps the question of people with learning disabilities is the group that has made least of a stride forward and where we need to be looking now to say that we want to see those developments. And I know there have been developments. Because of people uh, in this room and others, things, there have been strides, independent living, which now maybe is under threat. And, and maybe we also feel that there's a wider threat in the world with the election of Donald Trump and you know, on all of those things being moved back. And it seems to me that while the experience of being black or LGBT or having a physical disability or having a learning disability are different experiences, the way people are mistreated, the same fake science explanations or fake science alleging that there are races, fake science alleging that people uh, are LGBT can be educated can be changed out of their status. Fake science from Cyril Burke about IQs. All these, the, the same eugenicist movement affecting all of those people. The Nazis affecting all of those people in the same way. So people, people's disabilities, people's equalities issues are different, but the way they're oppressed is the same. And fighting back is something that we have to do with people and, uh, and people with uh, in these equality strands have to be at the heart of leading the fight for them. So I think these materials are fantastic. We should be using them in schools. But I just want to end by saying that while there's been some progress, if we're really going to develop every child's individuality, then our school system still isn't fit for purpose. And it's not fit for purpose in all sorts of ways. And I've just got a few quotes from NUT members that we have gathered in three different reports across the last couple of years. Uh, quotes from teachers about the SATS tests that we put all 11 year olds through last summer and the reading test that we put children through last summer. I don't know if you know but at the end of last summer's reading, at uh, the end of last summer's SATS, uh, schools were required to tell 47% of, of children just before the summer holidays, just before they make the step up 
to big school, 47% of them were told they hadn't reached the required level to start secondary schools. And you can, and that's so disgraceful. And, that, uh, and you, you obviously know that children with special education needs are in that group. And teachers said to us, and this was not prompting to ask them about SEN, uh, SEND in particular, the reading paper was too difficult for my children with dyslexia or SEND needs. These insane tests are discriminating against children with SEND. I think it's criminal. I teach young, five younger year two children in a mixed year one to two class. Not one of them has achieved the expected standard for any area. Three of them not even reached the standard working, to, working towards standard in writing. Now those children have reached a standard. That's, we ask, we are, we're setting a standard from the outside that we say all children have to be at 11, taking away all of their individuality, the fact that children learn at different rates, that we have to, we have to acknowledge what children do. We have to stretch every child. Every child's personality, talents and abilities need to be stretched as much as possible. But you don't do that by setting an arbitrary limit, saying that children haven't reached it, and then saying that they are somehow failure or not reaching the standards. So there are these changes that we have to look for in the SATs, in the Key Stage 4 exams. It, it, there is so much that we need to change. So good luck to you and let's carry on working and fighting together. Thank you.